egg, 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 egg. Oh. I think maybe I should do this a lot more frequently. Ladies, gentlemen, and pals of all ages, probably the most important thing to the majority of people playing Pal World right now are the pals. The namesake, and they're the real crux of why this whole experience works as well as it does. And when it comes to getting new pals, there are about four different ways to do it. Finding them in their wild habitat, injuring and capturing them, finding them in cages in enemy human camps and releasing them, buying them from various merchants in the world, or our fourth method, hatching them from eggs. That final method is what today is all about. That's right. It's time to talk about breeding with your pals, and no, I'm not going to reword that. There is a ton of information to take in on this concept if you really want to nail it down completely, and while you can obviously expand your breeding operation significantly at higher levels, you can hatch eggs as early as level 7, so super early on, and you can start breeding to create your own eggs as early as level 19. With that in mind, first we are going to talk eggs and then get into a proper breeding farm, as well as how to actually target breed for specific things and how it all works. Starting off with eggs then, the eggs in the game each denote a different PAL type, so there's no way to know exactly what's inside until you hatch it, only which type it will be. Larger eggs will have higher rarity creatures and also require more time to hatch as a result, but generally will result in stronger creatures than smaller eggs, with the main difference, of course, actually being size of creatures specifically, as that would make sense. When it comes to finding eggs, they are random spawns across the map that switch up on a timer, so there's no completely set guide of go here for this or anything like that, but the best general tips that I can give you are to always check the tops of cliffs or mountains or spires, and always look at the sides of a cliff face as well, especially if it's a sheer drop, to see if there's anything tucked in on a little crag sticking out. Always as well, check areas where rivers are ending, these just seem to be the general hotspots for random eggs to appear. And it's worth noting that generally speaking, areas with higher level pals in them, naturally, will tend to have higher quality eggs, but that's not guaranteed by any means. As for actually hatching the eggs then, you need to get yourself an egg incubator. This can be unlocked at level 7 for one ancient technology point, you get these points from defeating boss pals either in the overworld or in the dungeon scattered around the map. Once you have your incubator, you can place an egg within them. Some eggs like it neutral, some eggs prefer it cold, some eggs prefer warmth. If you reach ideal hatching temperature, an egg will hatch at twice the normal speed compared to not doing that. So this is an important thing to understand and work around. If an egg is too cold, you want to build a campfire beside the incubator. If the egg is too hot, you want to build a cooler beside it. It's not too complex and it's a big deal as far as saving you time, especially with the larger eggs. Again, to reiterate, when it comes to wild eggs, there is no way to actually properly predict exactly what's coming out of it, other than knowing it will at least partially tight match the egg itself. But things are much more calculable when it comes to eggs that you get from breeding, which we will be talking about soon. The important information here, though, is just common wild egg spawns that I mentioned, and how to incubate the eggs effectively. Now we get into the much denser side of things, the actual breeding part. First up, why should you breed and what does it do? In Pal World, when you breed two pals together, the corresponding egg has a random chance to gain the skills and stats of their parents in random amounts as well. The math isn't by any means completely worked out yet as the game is still super fresh, but the simplistic view of it is that a pal that is bred will be born into the world with more passive skills than one that is found in the world naturally, and at least one of the passives that it has will be passed down from one of its parents, with two passives being the most likely result, one from each parent. There is a maximum of four passive skills you can have on any given pal, and early testing seems if you manage to breed the perfect stats and skills onto even the tiniest little pal in the game, it will be devastatingly strong. Because of course there are some really nasty passive skills you can get, and stacking them together can turn a chicken into a nightmare of an opponent. That whole thing though is a massive RNG grind type of deal, but there is also a much more short term benefit to setting up a proper breeding camp, and it's that through eggs you can get pals at a much, much lower levels than you would ever be able to find them naturally. And it seems there are even some pals that actually only come from eggs for the most part too. The reasoning for all of this is that the way that breeding works in the game is sort of a mathematical calculation, as weird as that sounds. Every pal has a hidden number that is attached to them, and the offspring is decided by adding the number of each parent together and then dividing by two. To put that into more practical terms, breeding two pals of the same species will always replicate that same species within the egg. But by breeding two parents of different species, you most often get a completely unrelated third species of pal. But it's not random, it is consistent. So once you know the combo, you know the combo. It can get deeper than that with pals that you create through breeding, even having different numbers or things like that, 
but it's the base default concept of how it all functions and why you should care in the first place. So now let's talk about how to make the process effective, efficient, and fast, as well as how to get a feel for how to manipulate it to reach your own personal ambitions. Starting off then, at level 19, you can create the breeding farm. This takes up a lot of space within a base, but outside of aesthetic reasoning, there's no real reason that you can't do something atrocious and stick it halfway into a rock if you want to. It won't make it less functional, but it does make it take up much less usable space, though it is of course a bit ugly to do that. You'll see here once you've created your breeding setup, the requirements for breeding are pretty simple. One male pal, one female pal, and then cake. Generally speaking, smaller pals will create an egg with only one cake. The bigger the pals are that you are breeding though, the more cakes they will require. With that, then you have probably properly worked out that the only hurdle to pretty much just infinite breeding within the game is actually the cakes themselves. So that's our next problem to solve. Cakes are created using the cooking pot that you can unlock in the tech tree at level 17. And you can see the ingredients here are five flour, eight red berries, seven milk, eight eggs, and two honey. So if we want to have a constant supply of cakes, we need a constant supply of all of these things too. So let's go in ease of acquiry order. To get yourself the red berries, you first need a berry plantation. One of the first things that you are asked to create to upgrade your base. To operate this automatically, you need a planting pal to put the seeds down, a watering pal to water them as necessary, and a transport pal to put the berries away. That one is relatively simple. Then you need flour, and to make flour, you need wheat. At level 15, you unlock the mill and the wheat plantation. The wheat plantation is identical to the berry plantation, except that it produces wheat instead of berries, and it has the same requirements as such. The mill allows you to turn wheat into flour by using a watering pal to run the process, and now you know how to automate your flour intake as well. Then we come to the other three ingredients, all best acquired through an extremely early pickup, the ranch. When you put pals in the ranch, they will occasionally give you materials related to what they are, and so what you want is Chickapea, one of the most commonly super early pals in the game, who will give you tons of eggs from just having it set up at the ranch, then you also want Mozzarina. This cow pal is found on this island, just a little bit west of the starting area, the original one, acquirable level 12 to 15-ish, so not too far in at all, and set up in your ranch will start to generate milk for you automatically, so that's those two ingredients sorted. The final ingredient then is honey, and the ideal situation to have this is to capture a bee guard. These are located around the more central grassy hills location of the map, and of course when set up in a ranch they produce honey for you long term. But they can be a bit of a pain to actually capture due to having a self-destruct attack that they use a lot. That said, if they die, they will actually drop honey just on the floor, so if you can catch one, you can automate your honey quite simply. Otherwise, until then, just collect it from their exploding corpses as they refuse to be taken alive. With that, you now have automation for every ingredient of a cake, and we hit our next wall. Creating the cake at the cooking pot takes an absolutely nightmarish amount of time. At least as just the player character ourselves, you will be assisted by any kindling pals, however, that are currently set up in your base, and higher level kindling skills speeds up the cooking time dramatically. So while your first few cakes might be agonizing slow, you can actually use these to help you get a better kindling pal purposefully and make your future cakes take a fraction of the time. Now that you've got cakes sorted then, let's talk breeding itself. I mentioned earlier that there is a sort of defined list of combinations for breeding specific pals from other pals, and that is a resource that you can look for if you want it for precision purposes, but for those who just want to know the general rules of breeding and are happy to work out the rest of it on their own for the most part, I'll try to simplify what we do know and just give a couple of examples. Two of the same species bred together will always create an egg of that same species, I mentioned that before, but if a species of pal has an alternate elemental version, such as Relaxaurus, for example. There is also a pal called Relaxaurus Lux, which is for all intents and purposes, Electric Relaxaurus. The logic that you might then apply here is actually quite accurate, as the sensible concept would be that breeding a regular Relaxaurus with an electric pal would then probably create your target creature. And while it won't work with every electric pal, that is still actually the correct line of thinking, as the actual combination to make Relaxaurus Lux is Relaxaurus and Spark It, the early game low level electric type. There are similar directions like this for every one of these sort of subspecies elemental variant type creatures like Brawn Cherry and Thwack together create Brawn Cherry Aqua, for example. So if your goal is one of those types of variations, this is the general way to have those come up. Outside of that then, I just have a couple of particularly specific early game breeds that I think are unbelievably worth aiming for, getting you extremely powerful pals in one aspect or another that you simply cannot get that low level in any other circumstance, especially ones that improve the breeding process itself and the automation we've got set up. And the biggest, most important one that I've got for this then is a hefty 
Kindling Pal. And the best one that we can go for from breeding is around level 25-ish to really speed up your operation. And for this, you need to have a Mossanda, ideally a male one, which are found in these central grassy plains area of the map. And the reason that you're after a male one specifically is that its breeding partner is Elizabeth, who has a 90% female spawn rate, making sense based on the way that the pal looks and also the name, of course, meaning the chances of finding a male Elizabeth are insanely low so that you'd actually want to find the male Mossanda to fill that role. Elizabeth spawns in the same general area as Bee Guard from earlier, quite close to Mossanda as well, but it's a bit of a rare spawn. If you breed both of these two together, then what you actually get is a pal called Ragnahawk. And yes, first, he is badass. Second, you cannot get this one anywhere close to anything considered early in the game through any means other than breeding exactly like this. And third, it's damn good for our current base work project, having level three kindling and some transport skill too, just for a bonus. The kindling, however, will speed up your cake creation process specifically an absolutely insane amount. The other one is less immediately related to the breeding farm itself, but will easily be one of your best workers to use in your bases in general, which is Anubis. Anubis is a pal that is exceedingly rare, with only two ways to actually acquire it, either from a set boss fight that you could find at level 47, so exceedingly late game, or through breeding. And through breeding is actually surprisingly easy. For the parents, you need a Chillet, which you can find on the literal starting island just up the way a little bit as a boss fight at level 11. Then you also need a Quivern, which has a boss fight at level 23 in this spot here up by the northwest starting zone. Breed these two together, and Anubis you shall have. There are actually quite a few different breed combinations that make Anubis, but this is by far the easiest, earliest, consistent one with guaranteed spawn pals to go from two. And that just about does it for today then everyone. A full guide on eggs and breeding and how to get set up to do it long term properly, as well as why you want to do it and how to actually sort of game the system a little bit. I hope you've enjoyed this end and hhopefully it helps you find your perfect pal to take along your entire journey much earlier than you would otherwise expect to get them, or even just helps you breed a weak species into becoming one of the strongest singular pals in your world just for fun. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye